so for me, uh, I've been at Radiant around four years, full-time on staff. I come out of the marketplace, so I worked at a Fortune 50 company called Stryker here locally. My background's engineering, so why not work at a church? Uh, that's what most engineers do, ultimately, but... Uh, uh, it's been a blessing. It's been an amazing ride. Uh, one thing I promise you today is we will be open, honest, transparent. Everything we've learned, uh, we've learned through uh, cuts, bumps, bruises, and scrapes. And uh, luckily, God has healed those as well, most of them, besides Pastor Stefan here. Um, but uh, so that's, that's me, my background. Uh, I get to oversee all staff and operations here. Uh, it's a blessing. Uh, I also say I get to do everything Pastor Lee doesn't want to do, um, which, is, which is fun too. So, John? Yeah, thanks, Pastor Rick. My name's John. Um, I'm the campus pastor here in Richland, and I have a unique, I think, dynamic at least from a leadership lens at this church, because I've been here forever. So I, I came on staff in 2004, um, June 1st, as a youth pastor. And so we had, I think, six, five or six staff uh, total. And I think we have 80-some staff now. So I think a big part of what we want to kind of talk about, and many of you are, are, are leaders in your own right, obviously, here, or run organizations or churches, kind of that development of we all know when a organization grows, it doesn't become easier, it doesn't become, you know, more uh, succinct or fluid, it, get, it gets more difficult. And so when we only had five people, like, you know, it was easy, and I knew everyone's name almost, except for that one guy, no, I'm just kidding. And now we have this, this giant staff, and so um, we, we just really want to spend some time talking about, <clears throat> as Rick said, the ways that we've tried to develop uh, unity versus uniformity, the way that we've tried to develop a culture of honor uh, and how we can all work together to really not just execute Pastor Lee's vision, but the vision the Lord has uh, for Radiant Church. So it's been an incredible journey for me and my wife. She's also been on staffs uh, for 15 years. And so, you know, I, I often say I see people come in and they'll be like, this is such a huge church. And to me, it doesn't seem that way because I was here when we were like 200 people and now we're thousands of people, but I still feel like it's, so it helps me too as a leader to kind of see it through other people's eyes and lenses and um, really trying to create rhythms and create ideas that help us all communicate our hearts and our strengths to make the entire organization um, flourish. So, uh, yeah, along that journey, obviously in 2017 is when we went to a multi-campus site. And I know probably most of us in this room are not uh, maybe part of a multi-campus church. We're not going to highlight that, but I think it is important because it does create some uh, different challenges. Uh, one of those challenges' name is Stefan Davis. No, I'm just kidding. He, he is a campus pastor in Portage. And so in 2017, he, he took that over, and I'll let him talk a little bit about that. Oh, incredible setup. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, my name is Stefan. I, uh, I did ministry for many years in Colorado at a, a mega church there and uh, worked often in a building called the World Prayer Center. Uh, got married in that building, spent thousands of hours, I think, uh, throughout my late teens and early 20s encountering and interceding and praying and got connected with Pastor Lee in those years. He became a, a really clear mentor and leader in my life. And through some different events, moved and did some different things, different parachurch ministries, some international evangelistic type stuff that was impacting the nations. And at that time, maybe thought I was done in ministry. I was going to do some stuff on my own and got a call from Pastor Lee to come be a part of what was happening at Radiant Church and to launch the very first extension campus of what was just Richland at the time. It was just called Radiant Church. It was not the Richland campus. And so I uh, had the incredible honor and privilege of moving here, moving my family here, left Colorado. And the often question was, why would you leave Colorado? And the clear answer is because God sent me. And it's been a powerful experience. It's uh, been a leadership experience way beyond my capacity and ability it has forced me to lean into the Lord uh, in ways that I never thought I needed to or had to. And uh, I've gone through quite an experience of dealing with myself, my own insecurities, who I am, and at the same time trying to lead a, a campus and navigate 
what was originally a merger. We actually took over a church that Pastor Rick uh, helped navigate. And uh, so we're, we say often, incredible, the Lord's the, amazing. <laughs> Stefan's been on too long, apparently. <laughs> Time to go. It's supposed to be subtle hints. The lights came back to me, though. I feel really good about that. So uh, I'll I'll close with this. Uh, Our campuses, our relationship between John and I, this team is critical. And the Lord spoke to me uh, about a year ago about the bond of peace and unity in the spirit. And we went on a journey. And uh, today, I think we have some really profound things to give to you because of that. You know, early on, there were some jokes, appropriate late. I don't know if Pastor Sean's still in here. Is he still right there? Appropriately, appropriately named the Portage Campus the other campus. And uh, it was an unnamed, unknown campus, uh, the little brother. But You man. guys have a Chick-fil-A, so stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, here we are four years later, and I couldn't be more proud to sit with these gentlemen to work together, labor together, to be honest and honor one another. So I'm grateful for these men, and uh, pass it to Pastor Ben. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Stephen. So my name is Ben. I have come here, been on staff for about two years, uh, helping Pastor John here at the Richland campus. I'm the associate campus pastor. Before coming here, I did have some time as a lead pastor in another church in Indiana, and so looking at that was not a multi-campus church that was like a medium-sized of four to five hundred church and so coming in here i came in as a learner i'm like one this this church what god's doing here is amazing and my family and i were attending here for a couple of years before i even came on staff and so we got to experience really the health of what i've now come to see um in this team and in pastor lee and the the senior leaders of the church it's, it's really amazing. It's really unique. And I feel like God just brought us here, set us here. We had a season of just healing and, and experiencing kind of the life that God has given to the leadership team. And then for me, I'm, I love to study leadership. So that's part of my journey is I'm a student of leadership. And so um, being able to apply some of that learning in a real-time setting has been amazing. And to work with with guys that have diverse uh, experiences and backgrounds and really over it all just a humility to, to say, hey, let's work together as one unit. I think uh, from my experience, that's rare. It's a huge blessing and an honor, like Pastor Stephen said, to work alongside and to nobody's carving out their own kingdom or trying to achieve their own kind of platform. Everybody's serving in their strengths, and it's really a beautiful and I think really healthy piece. And out of that, like Pastor Stefan said, I think the Lord has downloaded some some just like unique, maybe unity pieces that have come out of the health and the vision of the leadership here that's been here a long time, to, to Pastor John's point. So so I'm privileged to be here. I'm privileged to, to be able to work with these guys um, on some of these leadership projects, and, and we're excited to to share that with you. Thank you for being here. It's so amazing to see all of you, even in the back. Uh, welcome. Uh, yeah, there's some chairs up here, but I know you guys don't want to disrupt, but, but you're good. You're good. So thanks for being here. We're excited for this, for this session. Yeah, so we're, uh, we're not a perfect church. Uh, Radiant is not a perfect church, and we're not perfect people, and we don't um, want to give that, that perception. But I do want to honor Pastor Lee and Jane. Um, I've uh, I've been privileged enough to be on the board. I was on the board uh, previous to coming coming here, and I think um, you know part of that is uh, honoring that they have authorities um, in their life. They submit to our overseers, so Jimmy Evans, Tom Lane, uh, and Lauren Covarubius, and out of that submission, um, you know they have authority because they're under authority. I think that's how Pastor Lee says it. And um, also to our uh, to the Radiant Board. Um, that is a unified group, and I say that in that we only act in unity, um, and I just, I think there might be a couple board members out there. I just want to say thank you, uh, one, for your prayers, two, for being brothers in arms uh, through this and just acting in unity um, together. So I think it all starts from the head. Yeah. All leadership obviously comes from Jesus. He is the perfect leader um, and the perfect model for leadership, and from there, 
Um, you know, I think as we have grown, um, Jesus has led us uh, in our leadership. And uh, through some of those learnings, I think for me, coming on staff here four years ago, um, it, was, it was around uh, self-leadership. So really pressing in each of us individually into our relationship with Jesus. Uh, and then from there, developing leadership. And then through some of those, uh, for, for us, it was growth. It was another campus. Uh, the other campus, uh, Portage, uh, which we love, I actually attend there, um, started to show like, hey, there's some, there's some cracks in our armor. There's some things that um, we have to lean into. And, you know, that was one thing that we could have let that, you know, I, I, my takeaway, and I don't know if I learned this or came up with this, but uh, the, Satan always uses either distraction, deception to create division. And those cracks could have divided us. Um, and I feel like because we pressed in through that, and we'll talk about some of those examples, um, because we pressed in, God's actually unified us and, and drawn us closer together and, and made us stronger um, through that. So I think with, uh, with that, I don't know if you guys have anything top of mind as far as just, and it's not just Richland versus Portage. Um, we have central staff, so we have shared services as well, um, people like HR, finance, IT. Uh, so there's a central staff component versus the campus. I'll use that, that terminology. Um, and what I'm trying to show there is, um, I think through those, uh, through those um, learnings, it's very easy to kind of, we can see ourselves in silos and we can see ourselves as, you know, that silo is our world and that's good, focus is good. But when you're only trapped in that world, and we all have it, uh, whether it be marriage, parenting, et cetera, uh, when we don't zoom out and kind of see a larger perspective, uh, that's when, you know, Satan can come in, plant those seeds of division, deception, bitterness, and really sort of try to start to create division. You guys want to bring up past hurts and just... Uh, yeah, expose... <laughs> Who's the, who's the priest? Uh, yeah, this has been a, it, really an awesome journey. When Pastor Rick's talking about self-leadership, that really becomes the key of our organization. It's, yes, there's a, there's a dynamic where we're leading the organization under Pastor Lee's leadership, guidance, vision. Um, and I think for campus pastors, uh, we have a unique role. And it doesn't necessarily fit every single church, but if re- you can really kind of derive, uh, I think, the big idea, the reality that it's not my job to be the vision carrier, but to be the ambassador of the vision. I'm not meant to be the president. I'm meant to be the ambassador. I'm meant to defend, as Pastor Lee called us. He said, I'm, I'm not asking you to go create this culture. I'm asking you to go be the ambassador of the culture. And so we used to say kind of one church in multiple locations, but I feel like that conversation evolved into one house, many rooms, uh, really carrying the, you know, when you look on the back of the jersey, instead of every uh, name being put there, there's a couple of those universities where they just put the name of the university or they put the idea of the university on the back. And so we want to be known by our love for one another. We want to be known that we're in unity with one another. And I think one of the greatest lessons for me that I learned is I can pray for unity. I can talk about unity, but unity is found many times in my actions, in my behavior, how I relate to these men here and to the many staff members that we also represent. Um, And to create and drive that ambassador culture that we are all defenders of the gospel of Jesus first and foremost, way before the radiant uh, asterisk or brand, right? And so the, the carrier of the culture of Jesus uh, be, is so important to us. And uh, I just see that evident in, in the expression. Um, we, care, we all carry a lot of meetings, right? Like the death, death by meeting. And, you know, even though some of those changes had to take root that we value meetings. We value being even more in the COVID reality face-to-face, being with each other, willing to have hard conversations, honest but honoring conversations. And that's a bit of even what this is about, how to, how to not leave the room and create another meeting, but say it honestly and say it honoring. And that is really what fostered 
our ability in a moment, I think, will be more of a presentation of something to you because it was something that was birthed. Uh, we're talking about a pearl, right? Pearls are birthed in irritation. And I feel like we were given a pearl straight from God. And uh, we want to share that with you in a moment. But I just believe it, it comes in irritation. Um, the, the fantasy of those that saying, oh, I wish I could just be in ministry. We know that the guarantee is you're going to be irritated. And uh, I, I think we have found a pearl, though, uh, among us. And, and I'm really proud of that. Yeah, that's so good. Um, and, and the unity piece is really what... <clears throat> sparked kind of this idea that Pastor Stephen's talking about that we want to share um, because, you know, we got, God blesses unity. We read that in Psalm, you know, 133. You read that in Philippians 2. Paul's talking about we don't look out only for our own interests, but also the interests of others. And we esteem others as even better than ourselves. And I think in ministry, even within the campus, but certainly uh, when you have other entities and and other campuses involved. It's so easy to see through kind of your lens, um, what you need to do, what your kind of pressing needs are. And I'll, I'll be vulnerable and say, as someone who was here for, you know, 13, 14 years before we had another campus, it was a big challenge for me to see through a different lens. Like, okay, how is that going to affect uh, the Portage campus? How, how am I going to be unified with Pastor Stefan on this? And how are we going to move forward if that's the new guideline centrally or, or whatever it was? Um, so we all had to learn through that. And I think what we want to um, highlight through this is it's not just about, okay, you have to be in a two-campus model. Every organization as it grows is challenged with communication and with relationship. And I think those have been some of the things that we've really had to be intentional about, like, we need to know each other. We need to have relationship outside of just sending emails or making decisions because then you can begin to see through that lens and you can begin to have a, a different way of being impacted by those decisions and then also uh, walking in unity, like seeing it through the eyes of, of other people and how that affects them. And, and so uh, to Pastor Stefan's point, we haven't always done that perfectly. We're still not perfect at it, but our heart as we share this kind of model that we've called the radiant way um, is that you're able to just adopt some of it. Again, I think sometimes we can get in like cookie cutter mode and we hear someone else or we see another ministry or we see what they're doing and we're like, that's what we need to do. And we like, sh you know, carbon copy and try to do it exactly. And our heart is that you don't walk away from this going, we need to adopt that completely, but maybe there's some some threads to this. Maybe there's some pieces to this that will help you, help your organization, help your leadership. And then the Holy Spirit has to download that and lead you into how you're actually going to um, administrate that and incorporate that into your staff and into your own leadership. So um, I'm going to give it to Pastor Ben, who's going to kind of help walk us, I think, through the Radiant Way, unless Pastor Rick has something. So uh, real quick, then I'll pass it over. I think um, Craig Rochelle says you can have growth or comfort, pick one. Um, and I think, you know, we've, we've ch here at Radiant with Pastor Lee, we've, we've chosen growth and not out of a, not out of a uh, quest for numbers, but out of a quest to fulfill the Great Commission. And, um, you know, I think through that, as we've grown, um, complexity has grown with it. And, you know, I, um, I got a picture of the Lord of, I love our staff. I feel like I was sent here um, to love on our staff, uh, primarily, not that I love the congregation, but I'm kind of a behind the scenes, um, pastor, uh, leader, uh, for, for the staff. And I just had this picture of our staff, um, amazing hearts, amazing people, but I just like felt, I saw this picture that they were in chains and trying to do, trying to do great things, but in chains. And, um, that's when God started to download the radiant way, uh, what we call the radiant way into, into me. And that's where I wanted to share it with my brothers. Um, because, um, I know whenever you bring, uh, things to a team and the team is excited and adopts it, it's just so much more powerful. Um, so, you know, I think, I think one thing that we do well is like we, there's co-submission. We submit to one another and we ask for feedback and we're open and vulnerable. Um, and that, you know, trying to maybe give some examples outside of ministry as well that you guys can take with you. Um, I just think that transparency and vulnerability is kind of the, the heart of 
of the heart of our unity. So uh, within the Radiant Way, what we developed, um, you know, was some language, and then we've we've rolled this out to our staff, and it's really kind of caught fire. You know, we haven't uh, we have done some meetings around it and some other things, but I just feel like God is breathing on it for for Radiant, and I hope it's I hope it's also you know helpful to you guys. So, Pastor Ben. No, go go for it, man. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, uh, working together with these guys, we we have coined really the radiant way. Which I'll just read you the the definition of the radiant way. Again, this came out of like this was an answer to the question and maybe some of the irritation we were having. Um, the challenge is always to nobody re- else gets irritated. Yeah, it's just yeah. just us. Just okay, us. <laughs> perfect. I'm the only girl. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, in that time, God's not just frustrating us for frustration's sake. He's trying to deliver an answer to the solution. So sometimes feeling that, that pain and that tension, uh, what I appreciate about this team is we lean into it together. We lean into it together, even if we're a part of the problem. And how can you not be? If you're in leadership, you're a part of the problem. So let's just say, hey, that's me. Um, and then owning that piece and bringing it to the table, um, love working with these guys. But this, this Radiant Way kind of came out of just some of the tensions we were having. If you change one thing at one campus, it's exponentially felt across all of your campuses. Well, you're here as a single um, campus or, or one church in one location. You know, you change something in one ministry. It impacts all the other ministries in that church, in that house. So, so really, our, our heart was to say, hey, how can we introduce a language that, that we can all share? You know, in the Tower of Babel, there was a common language, and the people accomplished a great feat. It just wasn't in the heart and in the anointing of God. But what we're finding is that when God wants to do a great thing in unity with people, he will release a common language with that people. And so part of our common language were the songs that were being written through Radiant City Music under Pastor Caleb's leadership, were the teachings from Pastor Lee and Pastor John and others, and then also this kind of behind the scenes leadership piece that united all the staff together around the common language of the radiant way. So I'm going to just read to you our common language and what God kind of birthed through through um through our struggle I guess for for unity. The radiant way is our expression of relational unity and operational excellence. Those are the two key pieces, relational unity, operational excellence. And I'll just pause right there because what we're, what we're experiencing is there's sometimes tension. You can focus on operational excellence and making things look and feel right and the same across multiple campuses or multiple ministries in the same house. But there, there's times where, where that can cause relational tension. And so it, then there's another fo- focus that says, hey, let's just focus on relational unity and the operations are suffering. And we said, hey, we don't want either one to suffer. We want excellence relationally across all of our staff and we want excellence in how we're actually operating. And so the, the harmony of the Radiant Way is it brings these two together and say, neither is more important than the other. They both need to be held up um, equally to God. So it begins with relational unity and trust. The Radiant Way serves as our church campus multiplication model. It lists the ministry and processes that must be the same across our campuses. The Radiant Way also defines guidelines for flexibility, local autonomy, and campus contextualization. And then we we made a few points, and we said the Radiant Way is not a machine. You can't just put in something and get out the other end, something that is the Radiant Way. It's spirit-led. It's spirit-led first, and it's coming through relationships. The ideas are coming from people who are hearing from God. And so, so it's not just a machine. The Radiant Way is not set in stone. It's a living system. And I think uh, Pastor Rick does a great job of leading us in that operational excellence, but also saying, hey, look, this is not set in stone. Our, one of our staff values is flexibility. Uh, you've seen that at the conference already. And so the, you know, there's an anointing on that flexibility at times, and, and there's a blessing in it. But it's not always easy or convenient operationally to hold that value of flexibility, yet it is often a spirit-led. It's not a lazy flexibility. It's like a follow-the-spirit flexibility, if that makes sense. 
So there's three values that we coined then. These values would help us make decisions across all of our campuses and ministries. These are the values that would frame our decision making and what we would bring to the table. First of all, spirit-led, number one. And this is kind of what we wanted to share with you guys. So I'll, if you want to just write this down, and um, spirit-led, simple, and scalable. Those are the three kind of core components that make up the Radiant Way. First, is it spirit-led? Are we as leaders, and Pastor Stefan and others have already spoken to this, how are we leading ourselves? How are we leading ourselves? Are we bringing our best ideas? Are we bringing that spirit-led idea? How are we walking in the spirit with our ideas, with this frustration? Is it just to make me more comfortable, or is it really to bless the whole uh, piece here? And so I think part, part of that lens is just, is it spirit-led? Have I prayed about this? You know, that may sound like way oversimplified, but you'd be surprised in a fast-paced culture how many things come up and you just, hey, you know what? Have I dedicated a slot of time to just pray about this one thing before I'm taking it on? So spirit-led simple means can it be easily communicated? You all know what um, the average reading level for like the whole entire population is, you know, is what? Do you all know? Fifth or sixth grade, yeah, right. So is it, is it simple? Is it easily communicated and understood? When I hear it, do I know what you intended me to hear? Okay, so that would be the communication feedback loop. So everything we do, if we're implementing something new, th- does everybody understand it? What if every time you, you did something new in your church or business or organization, you said, is it spirit-led, is it simple, and is it scalable? For us, scalable becomes... Uh, kind of unique feature of a multi-campus model. So to ask, is it scalable? Well, let's say, hey, we want to add like a worship ministry element to our children's ministry. And this is actually one of our children's ministry rooms. And you can see there's a stage for it. And you could actually maybe do live children's ministry worship. But then if you go to our other building and our other campus, maybe it's not set up the same way. So that scalability comes into play when we say that solution that you wanted to bring is or is not scalable at all of our locations. And so that has to become one of the lenses of the Radiant Way. And we bring that to the table and we talk about it. And Pastor Stefan knows the layout at Portage, knows the teams at Portage, knows the, the, how things work at Portage. Pastor John at, at Richland. And, so, and then with downtown and some other things developing, bringing everything to the table and letting it be spoken to uh, helps keep it Radiant Way and keeps us moving, what we say, at the speed of trust. So we're not pushing operational excellence at the sake of relational unity, because that's just pain later. And and so we say, hey, let's slow down. This may take a little bit longer to implement, but let's make sure we have all of our key players in the room, and let's make sure that it's spirit-led, that it's simple, and that it's scalable. And that will save us a lot of frustration. So, so this is our um, radiant way. And I don't know if you guys want to speak into that. Uh, now that I want to just there. tack on the, the spirit-led piece, something that was really helpful um, for us. Some years ago, we, we did this. As I know, you know, everybody's in a different leadership capacity here. Some of us are pastors. Some of us are, are um, in, in different maybe positions at a church. But for us, there was a time where we... We're doing so many things. And, you know, again, I've been here, I think, 17 years. So when we first started, like, we had church picnics and we had uh, Wednesday night, like, pie meetings and stuff, like, which I wish we would bring back. But anyway, we had, you know, we just had so many things. And what we would do is we would keep adding on because we're growing more things, but then we're still doing other things. And some of those things we're doing just because we always did them or we used to do them or we're used to doing them. And so I think that spirit led piece really can be a release from, okay, what is God breathing on? What, where, where is the vision of the church going? And are we okay letting some things go, letting some things die, or maybe even intentionally killing some things for the sake of unity, for the sake of clarity and really sustainability. So it was probably like six years ago, We had a whiteboard like this size and we had most of our staff in there and we just started saying all of the things that we do, like not weekend services, every other thing. And it was, we, we help this ministry and we do this and we have 
this for new believers and this for new people and this for guests who come. And it was insane. Like when it was all said and done, we were like, there's no possible way we can do all this well. Like this, it's just not possible. And so we went through and we cut and we revamped and we reshaped and we said, where are our values and what's important and how can we uh, do better? So I would encourage leaders, pastors, like do that with your team. And, and you'd be surprised sometimes if you write it all out, how much a lot of times you're doing. And then you recognize we can't resource adequately all of these things. And so that spirit led piece was really important for us some years back. And we decided this is what we're putting all of our, not all, but the majority of our focus, our energy on. It's the prayer room. It's our weekend services. And this is what we're doing for guests. And this is how we're going to disciple through groups or whatever it was. But we really had to intentionally uh, like shave some things down to do that. So I think that can be a really freeing piece for the spirit led. It really helped our, our staff and it really refocused a lot of our admin uh, help as well. So. Yeah, and I, I um, just to kind of pile on there with uh, spirit led the spirit led piece because I think that is obviously the central um, yeah. <laughs> central part of the whole what we call the radiant way. Um, so I even you know I challenged our facility team like I want you to pray about like who cuts our grass why why are they cutting our grass I want you to pray about what garbage service we use like there's nothing that we can't bring to the Lord in prayer. Um, and I think sometimes we're running so fast, we have our to-do lists, um, whether it's personal, whether it's family, whether it's work, church, um, that we just forget to just stop and, and pray. Um, God cares about the simple things. He cares about uh, the things that you know make up the day-to-day -day life uh, for us. And he cares about the big things too. But I think it was just kind of an encouragement like to you know, once again, um, stop, rest, like it'll be okay. God's got us. That's what faith is. And just, you know, refocus, press in, pray about all these decisions. Cause I think as we've prayed about things, um, we haven't arrived. I don't think there is an arrival, but as we've, we've kind of brought this in, I think there is more clarity. I think there is a, you know, not that we don't work and work hard, but there's almost an easiness or a flow um, that we're finding that is, you know, his Holy Spirit versus maybe, you know, more tension, more conflict, more conflict resolution, um, you know, on and on and on there. As we're talking, I'm, I'm reminded of just some odd symptoms of not really having this document, The Radiant Way. So, Portage comes on the scene, and I, I felt, John can, he could disagree with me, but I felt like, man, I love John, I knew John for like about 10 years, but I had only worked with him for a couple, and you know, what was interesting about how our staff received our leadership, our authority, and it began this kind of uh, symptom of like, well, that's John's personality, and this is Stefan's personality, and so things were being seen of like, well, I'm just receiving John's vision or John's personality or John's lens. And, and I would hear about it. I'm like, yeah, I love it. That's John. That's amazing. But how they would hear it and then interpret it and then how they would want to carry it out didn't always fit in a scalable or simple framework. And so I think what's amazing about the Radiant Way is it's, it's uh, maybe more like a constitution in, in terms of how it governs who we are and in and of itself like this becomes the bad guy rather than me or John or Ben or Rick or other main leaders within the church becoming a bad guy and we could call each other so in the last it's been around what seven eight months now uh, we can call each other to this guidance rather than pitting people relationships personalities um, leadership lids uh, capacities uh, and, and call on those differences, but rather say, we've just got to come together, hear the complexities that are happening in conversation, and it has to meet these three rules. And if we can agree that it meets those three rules, then we can leave in relational unity. And we're not going to have another meeting after the meeting. Like, we're going to be honest, we're going to be forthright, we're going to be direct, uh, we're going to be assertive. And uh, I, I feel like it's been so beneficial for us, I think we were 
kind of early on, tip of the spear going through that, but the, I feel like the, what it's benefited our staff in general of the unity in every single level, every location that they work at has really been just supernatural. It's been amazing to see how God has, in a way, tethered and woven us together through this, right? It's not the law. It's what Pastor Rick calls, like, it's living. And uh, so we want to hear that. And uh, if you're interpreting this, what John said, and I just encourage it again, is to go take the main idea, the main theme. Hear God for yourself in your business, in your church, whatever leadership you possess, and how does this work out in my leadership environment uh, is really key. So that's, that's kind of the general concept. Uh, we're open Q&A, anything. It doesn't have to be about the Radiant Way. It can be about uh, anything here at Radiant, leadership, um, different you know, stories of John and stuff and fighting over things. You know, we can, we have tons of examples. No. Yeah. Randy. When, when I heard there was going to be four, I'm not sure this was a boy band. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's uh, the next main session, actually. Yeah, yeah. main session. Yeah. I, I want to say, and, and while you're thinking of questions, what we've been really blessed with, too, is obviously Pastor Lee's, like, we're not making these decisions and these kind of uh, in, in a vacuum where like this is our uh, responsibility. We are, what, what I think has been the biggest blessing to the staff is every Tuesday, Pastor Lee teaches. So we have a pray, prayer and worship in the morning. And then Pastor Lee, who's obviously the head of our organization, uh, teaches on Tuesdays on leadership, on culture, on what is important to Radiant Church and why. And that way the entire staff is made aware. Like obviously Pastor Lee can't meet with everybody and he can't have one-on-one. -on -one. So that time, in my opinion, an hour and a half on Tuesday mornings is the most integral part of who we are as a staff because we hear what's important, what is on Pastor Lee's heart, where, where he wants to see us go. And then it equips all of us to be able to kind of help uh, execute that vision, be a part of it. And then everybody, including our students, uh, RSM, RSW, they're all there kind of, you know, some things can't be taught, they're caught. And, and, and everybody then kind of gets that culture and the DNA downloaded into them. And it just makes unity so much easier. So, I mean, I think that is just really one of the greatest gifts we have as a staff. And so for, for those of you who are, are senior leaders out there, I would encourage you like spend significant time, like, intentional once a week or whatever it is to make sure your staff knows your heart where you feel the Lord speaking uh what what God's highlighting to you into the ministry because then everybody else can kind of move in that direction and it makes the staff's job just incredibly more fruitful impactful and honestly easier so yeah and and I'll just anchor to that you know these staff meetings are they're transformational for our staff team and really because a lot of us are are working kind of, you know, on the weekend in different roles, this becomes a type of staff kind of church sure. in a way and um, a place for us to just have these weekly fill points and, and um, just it's incredible. And one of the things we, we try to emulate as, as a staff team under that example is that there's three main areas for all of us to lead. One, as we've said, is to lead yourself. Two is to be super intentional about leading your team. You know, not just helping, having them help you accomplish the work, but really lead them. And I think that's the example we're pointing to is, is you know, every Tuesday we are led by our senior uh, pastor. And, and that carries down to our staff meetings at each campus and our other um, places where we lead. We have those meetings to then say, hey, look, leading your team is so important to maintaining the unity at every level. And, and so that's a piece we do. And then uh, the third area, so lead yourself, lead your team, and then lead the work, lead the ministry. And I think one of the things we're tempted by, as all, all leaders are, is to be so involved in leading the work that we're too busy sometimes to, to carve out that leading the team. And if we were honest with ourselves, sometimes we're so busy to carve out time to lead ourselves and to really set apart times. And, and even this year around the calendar in 2021 and, and in COVID 2020, 
our team has really committed to leading ourselves in more robust ways, like blocking off calendar times where we're not accessed, where we shut off our devices and we say, God, this is time for you to lead me as, um, as a leader and to maintain that fresh vision for yourself. So, so yeah, awesome. Questions? It, ben. It, it has been it, it has been discussed as one of the things that uh, I know Cassie and Rick and I just had a brief convo about after we rolled it out with our staff. So yeah, we thought it would be a a, a blessing and and I think just setting up something. Yeah, I think uh, I think we we want to share whatever we have. Yeah. I think the um, the watch out is you know is we want to share the heart. We want to share the why behind it. So then you can. You can take it, pray about it, and it'll look different, and that's a good thing, you know. Because we've, we've, uh, we've copied things, you know. We did growth track for a while. We tried that. We tried this. We tried other things, and they didn't uh, didn't fit. It was like somebody else's clothes, you know. Um, once again, that's okay. It's we experimented. We learned from it. Um, so that's really why we haven't rolled it out, you know, to the network yet. We want to do it with the right heart and the right lens, so that you know the language can change like but you guys know the heartbeat behind it then yeah is there another question yeah uh how do you personally grow just sharing the truth with love because oftentimes i mean i'm a huge softy so i don't want to hurt people's feelings things like that but then you have the other side where it's like somebody's shooting you with a machine gun almost so how did you personally grow balancing the two and keeping obviously you want that relationship with the job done yeah, we got a couple of those we could share, maybe. Um, <laughs> no, so one, um, I'll, I'll uh, pick on my wife a little bit because she taught me this. She worked at a company called Aerotech that's a national like recruiting firm, and their culture was so strong in this way. They they called it carefrontation, so not confrontation, carefrontation. They cared enough about their coworkers to actually uh, confront them, and what would happen is like let's say I have a problem with Ben. Ben's the worst, right? Um, and I was talking to Stefan about it. Stefan would say, hey, you have 24 hours to tell Ben or I'm going to pull you both in a room and bring it up. You know, like we're not, gossip doesn't happen. Is that what that meeting was about? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but it, it's that, if we really truly care about someone and we've had tough conversations and people have had tough conversations with me because once again, I'm like, this is a, this is a brotherhood and, um, I'm in, I'm in process as well. And I, I want to know, like I mess up a lot. So that's where I'm like, no, I trust these people. Wounds from a friend can be trusted. Um, so that, uh, you know, I think that's how just almost changing the lens. But I think the other piece is, you know, we've asked and people have answered like, hey, can I speak into your life? So w when you're not in a conflict, you like set those ground rules um, for like, hey, is now a good time for feedback? Maybe it's not. Maybe my dog just died. Okay, if not, I'll, I'll come see you in 24 hours or whatever. You know, I'll give you some time. So um, just, some, just some things like that. And I'd say the other thing, because um, I do do a bit of conflict resolution in my role and that's natural where people is I start with, you know, I'll, normally two people come in, there's an issue. Um, I just start with, do you love Jesus? And they answer yes. Do you love Jesus? The answer is yes. Okay, great. We have common ground. There's nothing that with Jesus we can't solve. So um, just kind of once again, trying to zoom out uh, from that aspect. You guys, anything? I disagree that Ben's the worst. I mean, where would that <laughs> Well, I love you. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, man. We, uh, a few years ago, def yeah, I, I can't remember who taught this, but define love as passion for someone's highest good. And so love actually becomes the motivation to actually have a hard conversation. And so uh, I, I've gone through my own personal uh, therapy, marriage counseling you know, with my wife and 
Uh, I'm, I'm a pretty direct leader, but there was interesting dynamics about how I related with my wife because I had exhausted my emotional capacity within the ministry environment. And so who I was at work didn't always match maybe my marriage or vice versa. And so, you know, they, they just chalked it out on a spectrum. And there's, there's passive communication, there's passive aggressive, there's aggressive, and there's assertive. And, you know, the, the greatest and most healthy form is assertive communication, yeah. to be careful, to be thoughtful, but to be loving and to actually say it. Uh, there's a lot of people that have avoided saying it. Well, we have a, we do, and, and I think one thing we've uh, implemented that's been helpful is we have another, we have, Pastor Rick comes up with all these cool names, so we have a group called the Avengers, uh, and, and it's more of a self-development relational piece that we carve out time for, again, where we're vulnerable, we set um, expectations for each other, like, hey, this is what I'm building uh, towards, or this is what I want to see happen even in my personal life. And we share that with this group of peers and friends, and then they hold us accountable. We hold each other accountable. We help each other through that. Um, and I think that's been a super healthy piece for us. And it builds on that relational part that we talked about in the beginning. Like we're not just coworkers. We have to be able to have um, you know, a relational piece that we want the best for each other. We want the best for each other's families. And that's been super helpful. I think the other piece for me is you do have to be very intentional about your own personal development. Ministry is one of those things where if you give it this much, it takes this much. If yeah. you give it this much, it takes that much. If yeah. you give it that much, it takes that much. So one thing I've really appreciated about Pastor Lee is, is look, he is a, a, a driver, a visionary. He has more uh, downloaded from the Lord than, than we can implement at one time. But he's also very uh, guarded about our time. Like, he doesn't want us gone every night. He doesn't want us, you know, away from our families. He's, he's uh, really implemented and, and started that process very early on. And that's been super helpful as well. I know not every leader leads that way. But we, we really try, even with our staff or our teams under us, to make sure, how's your family? How are you healthy? And I think Everybody needs that, but it does become more difficult when you're on a higher level, and that's why we've really tried to lean on each other. Um, so one thing I've done, so I have two mature couples, uh, two, they're married couples. Um, they're grandparents, so they're, I'm not a grandparent yet. I've got a little ways to go. Um, so uh, they, they're intercessors for my wife and I, so they pray for us. We send them a monthly email. Um, and, you know, they're there to pray for us. They're there uh, for counsel um, if we need it. They're amazing. Um, just I, I look up to both of those couples just um, from that standpoint. Uh, the other piece I, um, I rolled out when I got here is there's a lot of, um, in ministry and just in life in general, I feel like there's a lot of focus on, you know, kind of repairing. You know, you get in a car crash and you fix the car, and I was like... Um, even in the secular world um, where I'd worked before, there was counseling benefits and other things. So we, we started a pastoral counseling benefit here where Radiant will, um, there's amazing Christian counseling organizations in Kalamazoo. Radiant will pay for it, go uh, speak to those counselors. Uh, it can be, you know, um, uh, you know, the pastor and their spouse can go and do that uh, as a safe place to, you know, whether it's, if it's, you know, things coming up in marriage, things coming up in ministry, like let's nip it in the bud. Let's get to it before it's a car crash. And then we're trying to repair it. Let's, let's do that. Let's do preventative maintenance or try to, to the best of our ability before we get there. So I think um, a, a lot of our pastoral staff have, have really leaned into that, um, at least from, from what I see. So that's been another uh, great program we've rolled out. Yeah, I was actually going to say the same thing. Pastor Lee, you know, asked each one of us to develop a team of intercessors. And so that was Pastor Rick, probably even before that, leaning into it. And then Pastor Rick asked us to uh, lean into mentorship or coaching. And so, 
Yeah, I think to be a healthy leader, I have a lot of inputs. I have a therapist. I have Pastor Lee. I have Pastor Rick. I have a coach. I have friends who live in different cities that are in ministry. To be a healthy leader, it takes a lot of people to surround me to be healthy. And I have to be vulnerable in all of those uh, environments and all those relationships. So my encouragement is, you know, if you're trying to do it by yourself, like you will end up burnt out. Like it's just the guarantee, the cliche phrase, but it will happen. And so uh, what can you do to not get there is, is a really big deal. Yeah. It just characterizes the leadership of Radiant, yeah. and that that echoes out to all of us mm. who go here. We see it in all that you do. Yeah. Thanks, Randy. That's awesome. Yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. I, if if there's another question, great. If not, John, could you hand me the uh, Divine Tapestry page, and I'll. Well, I wanted to share this. Um, it's something we. We shared with our staff meeting, again, to roll this out to like network pastors and to make, to really help you all as leaders, to help you all as leaders say, hey, look, what does it look like for us to be spirit-led leaders in our context? And that's not saying we're not now. That's just saying, you know, you're hearing some examples and ideas of men that have said, look, God, what would it take for me to become a stronger, healthier, better leader and we're sharing I feel like you know pretty open openly with you guys and and our heart is to to kind of exemplify this and not have you maybe copy what what we're doing but to share hey here's how God is leading us at Radiant some of us at Radiant Church and it's I would call it like a strand like it's a it's a theme it's something God is doing so at at Radiant we have seasons of prayer and worship and intercession that we call seek. And last uh, seek in September, God was really breathing into these concepts of the radiant way and really at the end of seek just gave the download and the revelation and all of the things that these leaders have been carrying came to fruition in in that paragraph and those statements we just read to you. It was really a a spirit-led, anointed kind of thing that we're seeing the fruit of now across our entire staff team. But one of the things we, we've learned, and, and Pastor Rick said, was you can't just, co- we can't copy. In so many of the workshops you've been in, you've probably got some things, some threads. We like to call them like, they're threads. God's weaving a tapestry in your church. Every church is unique, right? Your leadership is unique. Your team is unique. And you can take these threads home and hold them up to God and say, God, how does this, what does this thread look like? What does this leadership thread of humility look like? What does this leadership thread of being spirit-led look like in our context? And let him breathe on and speak in to what he's doing. We think that would be a great way to kind of walk out from, from this conference. But the tendency is sometimes to say, hey, I don't have time for all that. Give me the note. Give me the cliff notes. Give me the statements. What can I copy? What can I bring back? How can I implement it? And so I wanted to just read this, um, which uh, was written by Grant Tuller, but it was popularized by Corey Ten Boom. And I'm sure if you've been in ministry for any amount of time, you've heard it, but it's called The Divine Weaver. And of course, you know the story of Corey Ten Boom and her capture and her torture and her ability to see God in the middle of it. And so it's not written for churches, it's a personal thing, but I think you can hear how it could be applied to your church or or ministry. It says, my life is but a weaving between my Lord and me. I cannot choose the colors, but he works steadily. Oftentimes he weaves sorrow, and I, in foolish pride, forget that he sees the upper and I the underside. Not until the loom is silent and the shuttles cease to fly shall God unroll the canvas and explain the reason why. The dark threads are as needful in the weaver's skillful hand as the threads of gold and silver and the pattern he has planned. He knows, he loves, he cares. Nothing this truth can dim. He gives the very best to those who leave the choice to him. And God has given you some threads here at this conference in the worship times and the teaching times. There's probably a few more that are coming before the end of this. I would encourage you, we would encourage you, take those back home, sit with him, pray, say, God, here's some threads. I don't know what you want to make with this, 
but lead me, guide me, help me put this together. You're making something beautiful in my ministry, in my church, and we applaud that. We want to help. We want to serve what God is doing in, in your home and, and bless you in that. So, if you guys have other thoughts, we could send off in, in prayer. You guys good? God, I thank you for each leader here. I thank you for each ministry represented here. Lord, we just sent your Holy Spirit on this whole conference. Lord, you have shown up in in your power and in your glory. And God, I know that you are speaking to so many leaders about how you want to infuse your life and your strength into what is already happening. And so, God, we just pray that in in any way possible, you would take from this workshop and just give encouragement and strength and insight and, and power to your leaders, that they would walk out of here more inspired to be the leaders you've called them to to be in their context. And Lord, we bless every context. We say that your work would be done, that your will be done, that your kingdom be established in greater measure. Lord, we pray that the threads that you are unleashing in our midst would be carried to fruition in every home church, in every home ministry, Lord, in every leader's life represented here, that you would put together the beauty of the tapestry that you see, God, in each home, in each life, in each marriage, in each leadership challenge that that is represented in this room. And at this conference, we give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen. Amen.